All right, final segment of the show tonight here is always uh, brought to you by John Daspit and the Daspit Law Firm. It's daspitlaw.com, 713-CALL-NOW. John and his firm, personal injury attorneys, uh, they'll handle your case. They'll work for you 24-7 nights and weekends. So if you get in a car, boat, motorcycle accident, it's John Daspit, the Daspit Law Firm, daspitlaw.com, 713-CALL-NOW. He is the former coach of the Houston Dash, took over uh, Gotham FC this year led them to the NWSL title with a two to one win over OL Reign. He's Juan Carlos Amoros. He joins us now. Juan, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Glenn. Well, we wanted to recap what was a pretty remarkable season. Uh, what a turnaround for Gotham FC. And I, I, I know it's a season like most clubs of ups and downs and then timing things right. Just kind of take us into the year uh, in your words. Well, definitely a very interesting ride, no? Taking the the challenge of of moving the team that was bottom at the beginning, it was to change the culture, to change the style. Uh, I brought the staff, we brought players, but it was mainly how to how to change the club from the inside and step by step. And with a lot of work, we started doing that from pre-season. Season started really well for us. There was, as you said. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, but in this league, it's so competitive. You just need to make it to the playoffs. We did really well in the cup as well. Where, and and once we got to the playoffs, uh, even if we didn't finish the season with the with the results we wanted, with the, the games we were playing at really high level, and we knew we had the toughest run going away to North Carolina. If we win that one, we we won that one, and we went to Portland, which was the the champions in the home turf in front of twenty five thousand people. We we also uh, won that one, and and in the final, I think the team again showed the, the commitment, the the ability, the belief in a in in a game plan, in a style, and. I'm very happy because he's obviously come up with the championship, but already we were recognized for our style and our football. So the fact that we were able to change from bottom to top is it's amazing. No, it's a it's a dream come true. Juan Carlos Aboros joining us. You heard him just say they beat North Carolina, Portland on the road, and then OL Reign in the final. Uh, Juan was a former coach at Real Batiste, Tottenham Hotspur. So when you get into this environment, um, uh, are there even some of the veteran players that need sort of a reboot and a, and a refocus and need to be challenged in different ways? Uh, because when you're a last place team, it's, it's, it's easy to kind of go down the Crimea river uh, kind of thing. Did you have to challenge even some of the veterans here? Well, I think the veterans here was one of the, the best surprises I had, no. Uh, obviously, in the team we already had uh, Ali Krieger, Ali Long, Michel Betos, uh, and they were really, really committed to the cause from day one. They really uh, understood what was required and what we what we needed, and they really bought in from the beginning. Then, obviously, we signed people like like Kelly O'Hara and like Kristen Edmonds. Uh, in the team, we also have Michael Therboni. You know, we're talking about seven, eight players over 35 year olds. Uh, that's always a challenge as a coach, no? Because they got all the experience that they've won, they've done everything. So, uh, but I can only speak so highly of every single one of them. Obviously, Ali Krieger is 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 probably the the top of them because she was the captain of the team and the captain of the club and and she was amazing but the rest of them from from day one we we showed them what we wanted to do and i think that got them involved from the start they they were really committed to winning and to do it in in a clear structure and in a clear way and and for me at the beginning i thought it could be a challenge and and with time i realized that they were they were the engine of what we did so uh, it's been it's been an incredible to work with every single one of them and Ali's retirement and and the way she she did this year it was it was something to probably write a book about. Juan Carlos Amoros joining us, coach of Gotham FC, the NWSL champions. Did you get challenged by by Lynn Williams or Ali Krieger? Or somebody, I mean, how much challenge did they give the coach? Because I know that's something you're not afraid of, and you're not afraid to be involved with because it can lead to better things, right? Absolutely, I think we created an environment where obviously Lynn is a person that is always trying to be better, and she's always having 
uh, questions to make sure that she understands what is required from her and what is required to win and what is required for her to be better. So we have a very, very healthy relation there. But I think we created an environment where we obviously challenge the players, but the players challenge us. And when we say challenge, sometimes people might be afraid of. And I think challenge is... Is a question is how to how can they be better, how they need to do better with their teammate, with the unit, with the team. And I think that's what creates a better team and a better individual. No, the, the fact that we create an environment where people can speak, where people can express themselves and and show what they fear and show what they what they doubt and at the same time what they believe. And and we have to point them in the right direction and understand and make them understand the why we're asking them to do certain things and and once we 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 are all in the in that same road in in that same direction, I think the players can highlight their individual qualities and their individual attributes, and that's what we've been able to do. Obviously, you know, Ling was our top goal scorer, and she was on the best eleven in the league. The same with Ali Krieger, but we got Jenna, rookie of the year, and now going into the national team. No, and we got like Mitch Purse coming back to like we could say coming back to life and being an MVP after a difficult season with injuries. You know, like oh, every single player that we have in the roster this year um, I think it's a stepped up uh, the line is Sihan uh, Neely Martin you know players that Ellie Jean players that have played key key roles for the team that that maybe weren't in the you know in I wouldn't say in the bed so how do you say in America but like maybe some of the biggest names if you want to call it but for us it's not about the names it's about the place it's about the human and and they've all they've all challenged and they've all challenged ourselves and they challenge themselves to be better and that's what got us the championship now Juan when did you feel a changing because you know you obviously had momentum going into the playoffs you got the last playoff spot right and then there is something uplifting about grabbing that last playoff spot and saying hey we're here now we got a shot at doing something special but wh- where did you really feel it began to turn uh, was there a specific stage or game uh, well, I think that the moment where I and I and I think it came up in the video that we spoke uh, that we sh- uh, put together as a club. I think on on August nineteenth uh, there was a very important game for us. I think we we went to San Diego. Um, we played really well. I think we should have scored goals. We didn't. We were two 0 down. It was the nineteenth minute. But we had three injuries already in that game, and and in the ninety something minute, the keeper the keeper Abby got injured. Neely Martin had to go and go. Uh, and the team kept pushing with 10 players. We put San Diego against the ropes. We scored a goal, I think it was in the 100th minute, and and the players wanted to win. And that's, that day I told them that that's the day I, I knew that we could go. We could go to the playoffs, we could go to the championship. So we, we actually uh, recap on that moment uh, the day before the final in the match day minus one, and we spoke about nearly going in goal and how the team, even with 10 players, uh, Show that character on that day. We showed them some pictures there on the pitch, and and I couldn't believe it when in the final in the minute ninety five the keeper gets sent off and Neely Martin needs to go in goal again, and and we actually win the championship. I still get goosebumps on my arms when I think about this. No, and in the minute you know, and we won the championship with ten players in San Diego with Neely Martin in the same goal that that he was on that August nineteenth. So I think it was a full circle of of the season, a full cycle of a very special story. So for me, that day is the day. Sometimes football is not fair. Sometimes you work really hard, you don't get a result. Sometimes you you were not good and you get a result. But it's, sometimes it's the feelings that you have as a coach. And I always felt that this group was a special, but probably it was on that August 19th. That I know, you know what, this 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 team has something in them that, that might, might take them all the way to the championship, no? Juan Carlos Zamoros is joining us. Uh, what a story that is. NWSL champions. Now, if you look at what's going on in Europe, and, and let's be completely upfront here, Barcelona, Manchester City, it's a bigger brand than the NWSL. Um, I get the sense there are going to be players competitively now that in a bigger way, if it's, it's already happening, that are going to want to go to play to Europe for a variety of reasons. Maybe because they feel they can expand their game differently based on the way the game is played over there. How big of a challenge is now the global perspective on the NWSL and maybe what does the NWSL have to do to remain um, competitive? Because I know over here we quickly say, well, it's the best league in the world. That could be true. It doesn't mean you're not being challenged. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think what, what we can't compete is with the history that those clubs have behind them. Uh, that's a fact. Uh, we can create 100 years of history in, 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 in three years. No, But what, what is better in America is the player experience, is the fun experience, is the competitiveness of the league, is the, the standards that that everything around the league has compared to the the local leagues in in Europe no uh, yeah the champions league is good but sometimes even in these group of stages you can see little stadiums stadiums that are not full uh, here we got regular season games with 20000 people on a weekly basis like so and i said this to the european players that we signed here listen be ready because here is Every week is a Champions League semi-final in front of thousands and thousands of people, and that's the standard. And and that day-to-day competition, I think players like Esther or Maitane are starting to to feel it and to see it. And uh, and I really hope, and I think that if things keep going in the same way, uh, there's going to be probably more players coming over this way uh, than players probably going American players going the opposite way. No, I think it's it's important that if we want to be the best league in the world, we have to have the best players. Those best players are some of them are from the US, some of them are international. We we already have a lot of international talent here, and I think it's it's gonna grow. But uh, but we can't relax. No, the league needs to push. The clubs needs to push. Now with the salary cap increase, there is little things there that are gonna. That are gonna help. I think the commitment from every club in this league to make it the best in the world. Uh, I think is is a fair challenge and a fair. You got we have a fair shot to it. Uh, and maybe to make it the challenge is now to make it more known internationally. This league, uh, looking maybe at that, changing some of the time of the games because they are very late in Europe or, or something like that could help. Uh, but we will see. You no, know? I think that the league is definitely on the rise. Juan Carlos Saboro is joining us. So. Do you think players from the perspective of their individual co- careers might, uh, I'm going to go play in a Barcelona or in the Premier League because I might be challenged or asked to do some things tactically differently, which could expand my game and make me a better player. Do you, do you see any players kind of thinking like that? It could be. It could be. No, it's difficult because every club have different approaches. That's exactly what we're trying to do here at Gotham. No, we're trying to be different in here. My uh, my assistant head coach Jesus has a, does a really good job. No, helping with all the shaping of the of the tactical side of things with our own methodology, what we call the organized chaos and the and the tactical order to to create something special here that brings the attention not only from the fans or from from the you know from the from from the people uh, around the game, but also from the players to feel like, wait, well, you know what, Gotham does something different. I want to be there. You know, I want to, I want to be part of that. I think we've shown that this year, players development, style of play, and and I think that really that really helped and that really is creating something where people is looking from the outside. We always talk with the players about we open the window on on game day and we let people see what we do every day at training because that's how that's how it is. And and I think step by step we've achieved that. We obviously got a lot of recognition, the championship in the end, which is unbelievable. But we want to keep going. No, we want to make sure that we we are not done yet. That's one of the sentences that that we we use a lot, and we we wanna we wanna keep growing. He's Juan Carlos Amoros, and uh, what a year it was for Gotham FC, the NWSL champions. They got goals from Lynn Williams, Esther Gonzalez, Rodriguez, two assists from Mitch Purse. They plowed through North Carolina, Portland, and and uh, OL Rain was a team they defeated in the final. It's it's a remarkable run. All right, you're in my home state in New Jersey now, and I know you were here in Houston. It was pretty hot here, as you know. All right, so what do you think of the great state, the Garden State of New Jersey one, living there, playing there, coaching there, all those things? Listen, I love, I think uh, I've lived in America actually in three states already. I lived in California some years ago. I lived in Houston. I live in New Jersey. I think one thing that is uh, always for me important is the people. I think the people in this country is special and, and in New Jersey they are too. Uh, I think here I got a little baby, so he loves the... He loves the countryside, going to the farms. It's a very enjoyable little town around where we live. And we also have the big city of New York around the corner. So it's a very, very nice, very nice place to live. Uh, so it was Houston, uh, a part of my heart. I always say it's there because uh, it, it was my home, my home, our home as a family. And 
and and we are happy. We're happy in New Jersey, but it's it's, it's, a, it's a great country. You know, America is a is a country that welcomes people with open arms and with a lot of different cultures that that make it that make it one of the best countries in the world to live. So I'm very happy that we have been able to 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 build a family, to grow a family here, you no, know, in in New Jersey at the moment. Well, uh, I think the NWSL has a huge asset in you because I know on the other side of it how badly you want to help grow the women's game and continue to push it forward in whatever market you're in. I got that sense when you were here in Houston. The last one before I let you go, you know, is there is there an area of the NWSL? Let's say I made you the commissioner, Juan. What would be yeah. the first thing that maybe you would do? You can't say expand the salary cap, but, you know, <laughs> what, 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 what would what would – be you know something really important i think in your mind right now that the league might want to adopt or accelerate mm, i think uh, maybe finding ways to make uh, to make uh, the that the, the 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 global vision of the league you know that the rest of the world find ways to to get the rest of the globe to or the world to to look at this league because it's very special there is a lot of talent yeah we can bring more talent but you need to find ways to make it visible you no know, visibility in, in in the game in I, I like to call it in the game more than in the women's game because that's when i think equality will be 100% there but i think uh, finding ways to make it to make it reachable for every person in the planet, and 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 that that would be something uh, that I would say will be the focus because that's when when everyone will know how good this league is. No? Juan, listen, thank you very much. I know you're flying out to Spain. Have a great trip back to your country, and thank you so much for coming on. Congratulations on the NWSL title and being named the Coach of the Year. Thank you very much, Glenn. Always a pleasure and, and looking forward to, to see family and friends back home after a, a very, very um, uh, unbelievable year here in, in New Jersey. You know? Likewise. Have great holidays, Juan. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, Glenn. All right. That wraps it up here tonight for Soccer Matters on ESPN 97.5, presented by DaspitLaw.com. 713 call now. There are presenting sponsors. Download the podcast, Spotify, Apple, Google. You can go to ESPN975.com as well. Plus, don't forget to get over to our uh, Soccer Matters channel uh, on YouTube. And uh, until next week, remember, I'm Glenn Davis and Soccer Matters.